Welcome to the channel guys, my name is Jess. So after an absolutely insane start to the week for Bitcoin, the price has finally stumbled onto some hope on the horizon. Following the very bullish CPI data that came out late last night, the price skyrocketed back above $67,000, which is our current key level of support. So let's dive into the charts today to talk about all the recent price action, the scenario for bullish continuation and bearish validations. We'll also discuss the growing Bitcoin dominance in the market and what that means for altcoins. Before we get into all that though, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel down below for regular Bitcoin analysis every Wednesday and Saturday and ring the notification button so you never miss an episode. If you're looking for even more content, be sure to join my free Telegram channel for daily Bitcoin updates as well as crypto and economic news. If you're interested in my VIP channel, you can check out more details over here. VIP gives you exclusive access to my personal trade setups with exact entry points, targets, and stop losses. Alrighty guys, before we get into any sort of future potential scenarios, we've got to start off by talking about what on earth has happened over the last couple of days and the context of all of our recent price action. So moving into the start of the week, things weren't looking all that good. We started off by losing a one month long uptrend, right? It was about 40 days that we had been inside this uptrend and it was originally the one that was supposed to take us above this key level of resistance on the upper ranges of this massive channel of consolidation and back into price discovery but before we saw that we actually saw a double top right here at $72,000 and the price corrected below our high time frame uptrend and to our next key level of support, that being $67,000 and the midline of our massive channel of consolidation. So when we were approaching 67, things weren't looking all that good. Momentum was still down, trading volume was still down, everything was not looking great and there were no signs of reversal really. But then we had CPI data come out. So CPI data came out last night, um, in Australia, that's Wednesday, 1030. And it actually came out very, very bullish. So if we'd go ahead and take a look at that data. We can see that core inflation month on month was lower than both the consensus and the previous by 0.1%. And core inflation year on year was below both consensus and previous. So both of these are less volatile than headline inflation over here. And so they're better indications of, you know, how inflation is moving. And clearly from the data over here, it's going in the right direction, right? We, we want inflation to be slowing down so that we can get the rate cuts that we want later this year. So after CPI data came out, things were actually looking really, really bullish and the market corrected pretty much straight away. We can see that massive green candle over here right after that news release went all the way right up to $69,900. So we just barely tapped $70,000. And then we had the FOMC meeting. So for those of you who don't know, um, a lot of countries lately have been starting to cut back on their interest rates. So moving into this FOMC meeting after having such bullish CPI data. I think a lot of people were really expecting maybe a little bit more positive information, a little bit more about the rate cuts, but essentially the meeting concluded, um, where is it? Just the potential for one rate cut later this year at the end of 2024. So the, the last quarter of 2024, maybe September, um, when originally in March, we were expecting at least three quarter point cuts. So overall, not particularly bearish, but I think in the state that you know people were in, particularly after CPI and after everyone else has been cutting their rates, this came out bearish. So it was perceived bearishly by the market, and we corrected back down to close the candle here on the 12-hour time frame at around $68,000. So let's go ahead and dive into all the recent price action. Let's talk about our bullish case scenario and our bearish invalidations. Before we get into any more analysis, guys, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor, BitUnix. BitUnix is an emerging cryptocurrency exchange committed to providing you with a secure, convenient, and highly functional trading and investment platform. Available across all countries as a non-KYC exchange, get global access to over 150 trading pairs with minimal fees on both spot and futures contracts. Join today to get $5,500 US dollars in sign up rewards and get 15% off all of your trading fees by signing up using the link in my bio or by using the code 1GG3 when you create your account. So naturally, after the kind of price action that we've seen over the last couple of days, the first thing that we want to know right now is what's going to tell us that we're going to keep going lower, right? What's going to be our bearish validation? So when we take a look at this chart, we know that we have our key level of support at $67,000, right? And that's going to be that very first warning sign. Losing our key level of support tells us that we are going to correct lower. So in that circumstance, we have the next key level of support being $65,000. We can see our validation points over here. 
right, for that being as a key level of support. And it also tells us that we move into the bottom range of this channel over here, right, and that increases our likelihood of also seeing $60,000 as we move to the macro base of support in this massive channel of consolidation. So naturally, that would be very, very bearish. Um, and zooming in just a little bit onto the four hour time frame, just so I can specify the level that we need to close below. We can see that over here. So this deviation low over here that went all the way down to 66,953, that will be the bearish trigger point. If we get a candle close below this prior low over here, that tells us, okay, we've lost the base of the liquidity level of this macro support here at 67, and we are going to see a correction. So that will be that trigger point that we need. Um, if we get a deviation below this level, this top level over here at 67, that's still not a big point of concern because as we can see on this four hour time frame, Bitcoin is currently traveling in a horizontal channel. So that brings us to the bullish case scenario. While we hold $67,000 as a base of support, the bullish case scenario is still somewhat intact. I would kind of consider this little channel over here between 67 and 72 being the neutral territory, falling below 67 being the bearish territory, and breaking above $72,000, this double top resistance over here, that's going to be our bullish territory. So that tells us we are definitely going to get a continuation upwards. This one, continuation downwards and while we're within the channel that's just sideways consolidation that is for the most part healthy now the reason why i wanted to bring your attention to this parallel channel is because if we go back to the last time we had fomc data so that was on the 2nd of may last month over here we can see literally the exact same pattern formation, right? And it gives us a little bit of indication of what the market's going to do and how it's going to recover from all the recent price action we've had here. So whether or not that bullish continuation is going to happen. So if we take a look at last month, this is month, this is May. Um, our key level of resistance back then was $67,000, right? We've just had that support resistance flip. And our key level of support was $60,000. $60, and we have our parallel channel over here. So let me just draw that in. That's the top. This is the, oopsies. This is the bottom, right? Okay, I would draw in a range um, top, but I just cannot be bothered. It goes something like that, you know, you have the range top with, with the wicks are at the top. Doesn't really matter. You guys get the gist, right? So we have our parallel channel. Now, within that parallel channel, we had not quite a double top because double tops have to be entered in from the top side and we get something like that. But we had our key resistance. We had a double rejection from our top level of resistance moving into FOMC. We had FOMC data. Prior to that, we had a deviation low as the market anticipates bearish news. People reduce their risk. The market drops. Had that bearish move, deviation below support, and then immediately we recovered to find $60,000 as a base of support, and then had a bullish continuation above our key level of resistance here at $67,000, and moved right up to that next key level at 72. So if we extrapolate that pattern and take that to where we are, where we are currently, and what the price action is doing, we can see literally the same thing. So while we didn't approach from the top from the bottom side from the top side down we had a double top formation sure doesn't really matter we had a double rejection that's what matters had a double rejection from our upper range of resistance moving into cpi fomc data we had a massive deviation below support at sixty-seven thousand dollars. we moved all the way down to 65 900 pretty big flush out um, particularly considering all the recent price action as well lots of red candles now we've immediately recovered to establish support once again at $67,000. So essentially what all that prior data tells us if we move that to our current position is that while we hold $67,000 as a, goodness me, as a base of support, we should continue to have our bullish, you know, continuation. And we should break above our key level of support here at $72,000 and go back into price discovery. Naturally, assuming that we break above our all-time high at $73,000 as well. Now, if we want to be specific about the little levels within this channel of consolidation here on the four-hour time frame that are going to take us to the upper range of resistance at $72,000, we've got to zoom in just a little bit on the one-hour time frame. And I'm also going to pull up the liquidity swings indicator because I don't have to draw in the lines now. <laughs> so if we go on the one hour time frame and we pull up the indicator, we can see that first of all, on this chart here, we have had three lower highs. And 
closing above that prior high over here at 60, no, oh no, sorry, not 60, 70,161 is going to trigger a bullish continuation to the range high at $72,000. We can also see our key level of short time frame resistance as well. So if I just get rid of all those circles and pop in a little parallel channel. So this is that support that was established back over here. And it is now acting as our key level of resistance, the upper range, which we just rejected from over here, right? So we can see over here, after we lost our high time frame uptrend, do you remember the one that we talked about in the uh, initial contextual part of the video, that one month long uptrend? When we lost that uptrend, what we immediately did was go to establish a short time frame support around $69,000, right? The base being 69150 So that is now our key level of resistance. We've had a support resistance flip after failing to break above um, the channel and get a bullish continuation it is now flipped to a base of resistance so breaking above resistance and the upper liquidity level of resistance is going to trigger that bullish continuation to the range high and we know from that higher time frame charts the four hour time frame analysis that approaching this range high we do have a high likelihood of breaking it this time around now moving on to bitcoin dominance guys things are not Things are not looking good. So a couple weeks ago, I think uh, one, two, one, two, three, four weeks ago. So just about a month ago, we had finally lost this massive high time frame uptrend. It's, we, we were in this uptrend for about 560 days, right? Long, long time. But that's pretty normal while we're in the bear market and, you know, the accumulation phase of the Bitcoin cycle. But as we start to approach the phases when we are right now, Bitcoin's had its halving. We are waiting for the bull market to happen, right? We've got, you know, rate cuts happening later on this year. We want to see some early signs that actual confidence in the cryptocurrency market is increasing and people are actually investing into altcoins. And, you know, we're starting to see those early rallies. And for a little bit there, things were actually looking really, really good. So if we move on to the daily chart, we can see it a little bit better. But at some point, a couple of weeks ago, we had finally lost our high time frame uptrend over here. We had a daily candle close below it and Bitcoin dominance even dropped as low as 53.7%, right? And I know that's not a big amount of movement, but that's really all it takes for, for altcoins to see some very, very, very strong bullish moves. But unfortunately, after all the recent price action for Bitcoin, doing what it's doing and, you know, being very confusing and, you know, not moving very much, going sideways. People obviously lose interest. Cryptocurrency market confidence is dropping. Fear and greed index is dropping. And so with that, Bitcoin dominance is going to be creeping up. And it's actually gone up enough that it's gone back above our high time frame uptrend as well. So realistically, with the position that Bitcoin is in right now, we really need to be breaking above $72,000 and going back above to these higher levels over there, retesting the all time high. Because as we know, every cycle, oopsies, every cycle when Bitcoin tests the all time high, we get a peak in Bitcoin dominance, particularly as we approach this level of resistance, this trigger level over here. Bitcoin should be peak, uh, Bitcoin dominance should be peaking and we should be seeing a reversal. But unfortunately, the last month of growth that all coins have had and Bitcoin dominance has had has been eradicated by this recent move. But that is another key thing to be looking out for besides Bitcoin is this chart over here and this trend line. Losing that trend line should tell us that hopefully we are going back downwards and all coins should continue to creep up. So with this growth in Bitcoin dominance, all coins haven't been doing very well. If we go ahead and take a look at total altcoin market cap, we can see that we lost our key high time frame uptrend as well for altcoin growth. And we have fallen below and are potentially closing below. We've got one day, 21 hours until the candle close on the two day chart. Um, potentially closing below our 100 day moving average. Now that is huge because typically we don't see a close below that when we're entering the bull market season or the altcoin season, um, particularly after the halving. So if we go ahead and take a look at the previous price action, essentially, let's go back. Do, 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 do. That was the prior bull market. We can see we were above the 100 day moving average the entire time. And over here, we had our halving. See how immediately after the halving, altcoins pretty much flipped or immediately just before the halving, altcoins flipped above the 100 day moving average. And even as it was testing the all time high over here in this range, we only had a deviation below, right? Over here, that little tiny wick 
that moved below the 100 day moving average rapidly closed above and then we had a massive rally that continued on throughout the entire bull market right and all coins continued to rally for quite some time yada yada doesn't matter but what we're seeing right now is pretty unprecedented so the position that bitcoin's in right now and with bitcoin dominance being oopsies bitcoin dominance being so high we really need to see a breakthrough of this upper level of resistance soon to guarantee this bull market for all coins and to recover above this 100 day moving average as quickly as possible because going below that again unprecedented and signals a lot of trouble for for all coins because as we know this lower level over here this little trigger point on the altcoin market cap chart are around 615 to 600 thousand uh, 600 billion sorry is essentially a level that marks the all-time low for a lot of altcoins so us approaching this level over here is a very big red flag Alrighty guys, that is all the analysis that I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video or you learned something, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel down below. And if you're after even more content, check out the free Telegram channel for daily Bitcoin updates as well as crypto and economic news. If you're interested in my VIP channel, you can get more details over here. VIP gives you exclusive access to my personal trade setups with exact entry points, targets, and stop losses. And if you are a trader, sign up down below to bit you next to get 5,500 US dollars in sign up rewards and 15% off all of your trading fees. Hope you guys have a really great week and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.